Hello, Richard at Yesterday's Machinery, back again with another video and today we're going to talk about piston rings. This is a small one, 40mm ball, 1 horsepower 2 stroke. This is a 30 horsepower poodle engine, 300mm ball. They are both made out of cast iron. Uh, some people say that the cast iron material in the rings should be softer than the cylinder liner or the cylinder ball. Uh, that ain't fully true. Of course they can be, but you have rings in cast iron bores that are made of steel that is plated with nickel, copper, chrome and so on. So if the cylinder gets oil, that won't be a problem at all. And I have some books describing rings and that only says that uh, cast iron should be used. Nothing more. So if you find yourself something that fits in your measurements for making a piston ring, use it, if it's cast iron. I have used flywheels, quite good for making these big rings. I have used brake drums, brake discs, cylinder liners, or water pipes, anything really that fits and are made of cast iron. Of course the quality has to be good, they can't be pores and ugly hole from the foundry and such things it's gotta be good quality because else it's gonna snap off later on so yeah let's go with this so here we have the engine that needs new piston rings it is a early Bayer made in around 1913 open crank two stroke crudel engine five to six horsepowers here we have one of the old rings as you can see shine in the top but black carbon a little bit of shine black carbon again. So this ring is made by a person who didn't know how to make piston rings because this ain't round. And a piston ring should be round, that's a pretty good feature for a piston ring. So we're gonna make new ones today. So let's see how that goes. So here you can see the ring and the vise. I did put a piece of wood here to hold the ring open. I made a little slot here for the tool to work freely. So I'm just gonna make a little slot here, about half a hole of a six millimeter in the other half in this end, because the locking pin in the piston is six millimeters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up here. Okay, so here I have the piston ring. I'm gonna expand this using the heating treatment method. I have a old bolt with a nut here. I'm gonna spring this out, put it like this on the nut. This is a little bit too much, an extreme spring load. But now I'm gonna take the blowtorch, heat this up, almost cherry red. I don't think you're gonna see it on the camera because it's so bright in here. But I'm gonna heat it up, slowly 
working my way around to get a even heat up. Because you don't want to make this part cherry red, then this part, then this part. The ring's gonna collapse and be not round, at least, not good. So heat it up slowly uh, for like five, maybe ten minutes with the blowtorch. Uh, then I'm gonna take it off and I have a bucket of sand down here, so I'm gonna cool it off very slowly. Let it cool, cast on, like to cool slowly. Um, then the ring is finished. I'm gonna put it in a cylinder and uh, fix the ring gap. I have a calculation for the ring gap as well. I'm gonna show you how I do that. So uh, yeah, let's go light up the blowtorch and see what happens. There you can see, now we have a nice gap here. Put it in sand. So here we have the almost finished ring. Uh, I think they turned out just exactly how I wanted them to be. Very nice, and I have already done a step that I haven't shown on camera, uh, grinding this surface. In the lathe I made those 0 0.05 thicker than I wanted them to be, because I want to grind the surface in. It is very important that this is flat, so uh, I just took a piece of uh, steel, very flat. You can also use like a table, really very flat surface, a fine sandpaper and just work your way on the surface on both sides so it gets really flat and nice. And here I have 0 0.15 and this is a bit tight but I think that is all good for this piston. Here we have it, the holy grail of these repair books. A 1950s Techno diesel engine repair manual. Of course, it is in Swedish. Good for me, bad for you. Here we can see measuring the play between the ring and the green groove. And the play usually is around 0.05 to 0.1 millimeter. Sometimes even greater at 0.15 millimeter for the top compression ring and a bit less for the other ones. Of course, the top one gets a little hotter, gonna expand a little more, but I'm gonna set all my four piston rings to the same, because that ain't gonna matter really. And my rings are much thicker, like 9.7 millimeters. The one that this book talks about is from a modern 1950s diesel engine, which have piston rings that is around 3 to 4 millimeters. So mine are twice as thick, but the measurements here are around 0.05 to 0.15, so I have mine at around 0 0.13, 14 maybe. So that's gonna be all right for this engine. So I'm very happy with this. Very good book. Please buy those if you can at yard sales or eBay or anything. Very good information. You don't even have to go online to find it. So that's where I found my data. And this works, I have used it many times, so uh, I'm very confident with this. So yeah, let's go with this. The ring is a little bit loose, as you can see, but not much. So this will be just absolutely perfect. And all the rings are perfect, and uh, just like this one, turned out actually better than I thought, almost. This is like the fifth or sixth time I make piston rings for crude oil engines, and they often turn out just like I wanted. Here we have six millimeters. I have made the rings 5.3, 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 
so we have a little space under there as well uh, so yeah i'm very happy with this now i have to fix the ring gap and i'm going to show you a calculation that i think is very good and easy for calculating ring gaps because you don't want too much and you certainly don't want too little either so i'm going to show you how i calculate this so what is a ring gap and why do we have to have a ring gap at all a piston ring gets hot when the engine is running steel cast iron so on expands when it's hot and you have to have the ring gap because if you wouldn't the ring would expand too much and push on the cylinder wall and the engine seizes up so that's why we have it but the question is how much do we need because we don't want too much of a ring gap because then we will lose compression instead and that's not good either but i have a book inside my house that is really really good and here is some numbers of crude oil engines about temperatures and cast iron expanding and so on so normal working crude oil engine top of piston is around 275 degrees celsius top piston ring is about 50 degrees lower so 225 but the water cooled cylinder wall is 75 degrees celsius and that will also expand so we can remove 75 from 225 and that leaves us with 150 degrees celsius cast iron expand with a coefficient of 0 0.000010 to 12 I'm gonna use 12 to be on the safe side and what that really says is if you have a one meter long cast iron rod heated up to 100 degrees you're gonna be one millimeter longer than it was before and the piston ring length in this case is the bore 142 times 3.14 equals 445.8 so 150 times 0 0.000012 times 45 no 445.8 equals 0 0.8 so a functional ring gap at normal load for this engine will be 0.8 but you always want a safety here so i'm gonna add 0.3 the book doesn't say how much of a safety you want but i'm gonna add 0.3 and i have used this many times before and i am very confident that this will work just fine so i hope this can be for good use to the viewers as well here so that's how i do it and i'm gonna set a ring gap for 1.1 and of course the top ring gets hotter than the second one third one and fourth one and so on uh, so you could really make the ring gap a bit smaller on the second ring and the third and so on but i'm gonna set them to the same ring gap uh, because it doesn't really make much of a difference to make them smaller either so i'm gonna set them for 1.1 for every ring so big piston rings like this I mostly use hand tools because I don't want to remove too much you could make yourself a small jig with a cotton disc but big piston rings like this I mostly use hand tools because I don't want to remove too much I just want to remove a little little bit and then test it in the engine again measure and see where we're at So here you can see that the piston ring is perfectly round in the ball. Uh, you want to measure the piston ring down, far down in the ball, because the ball can be bigger in the top than in the bottom. But I tried that and uh, it was the same and the camera shows it better up here. So now I have exactly 1.1 millimeter of a play in this piston ring. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the other four or the other three there are four in total uh, and then I'll mount it on a piston and then just mount the engine back together again new piston rings all ready to go in lots of oil uh, and it is quite a clever thing here in the end of the bore because it is like a little funnel so you do just have to squeeze the piston rings a little bit to start working its way into the bore like this perfect 
There we go. So that's it, the piston rings are mounted, the compression is already way higher than it was before, so I'm really confident that this will start in the part 2 of this engine series that's coming up in like a week here on Yesterday's Machinery. So please consider subscribing, that helps me out a lot, and like this video if you find it interesting, please leave a comment down below. And I hope you guys can use this information to make your own piston rings if you need to at some point. And I think this is the fun part of this old engine hobby, that you can't just go to shinysparksonline.com and order your stuff. You have to make them yourself. So I really like this. So until next time, have a great day and I'll see you.